morning everyone, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. Welcome to my home. We have lots of really good stuff to share today. Um, it's been extremely hot here, but uh, got an early start this morning and have done a lot of different things here that I thought I would enjoy sharing with you and you guys might enjoy. Good morning, Miss Shelley. Good morning, Miss Courtney. Good morning, Jill. Hello, hello. You guys are fast this morning. Awesome. Awesome. Let me real quick see if this pops up and yes it did. So I'm going to get on here and real quick invite those couple people. So how are you guys today? What are you guys up to and how are things going? Does anybody have any prayer requests? That's another good question. Let me see here. There is one. Hmm. Type in the other. There we go. Okay, that's done. Oh, so much good stuff. So much good, good stuff. Ah, hello, Miss Diana. Shelly says, good morning, Tammy. We finally got some rain this morning. Nice. Our rain, it wasn't last week. That was the week before last that we got the rain. But man, that really made a difference. It's getting dry again. It was like 99 yesterday. Today is like 87 um, predicted. But... Um, yesterday was really hot, but that normally when we get rain in the summertime, it's like a spritz here and there, typically electrical storms, which are the worst for the Pacific Northwest. But last Thursday, it started to rain and it rained all through the night into the morning and then some of the rest of the Friday afternoon. So that was really non-typical and that rain really, really helped. Um, but yeah, it's so dry and so hot. I know Diana has been experiencing the hot weathers too. I am looking at my ball home preserving book, looking for recipes. Ah, that is one of my favorite, favorite books. Uh, there are two of them out. Uh, one with an orange cover um, and one with a blue cover. And I'll tell you, they are just, they are my favorites. Uh, Diana says, Chelsea is in the process of finding out if she has hypothyroidism or diabetes. Okay. We will keep that in prayer. Um, definitely have a lot of prayer requests this week. Um, we had, oh, you lost me, Courtney says. Hopefully I'm not in and out. Um, oh, and you know I didn't check what, darn it, what um, wireless I'm on for today. Um, but while we are talking about prayer requests, we have had so many prayer requests and really, the things that have been transpiring as a result of our prayer request is what is, has inspired this week's um, chat. Good morning, Miss Tammy. I owe Miss Tammy some great thanks. I am drinking a tea that she blessed me with, and I am also doing horseradish today, which is something else that she blessed me with, which I'll be showing you in a little bit. Um, we were praying for a fella named Terry who had um, MRSA, uh, Linda messaged that, Linda Mahoney had shared that with me. Um, this is a friend's brother and he was really not doing well. He was in ICU and we listed him on the page for prayer and he, he had surgery, it went well. He's on a ventilator and is, and is heavily sedated um, it did take longer than expected and his blood pressure kept dropping, so they are keeping him on the ventilator for a while. She said to thank everyone for their prayers and also um, she just found out her daughter's friend has been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and um, it, she also asked if we could add that uh, to the prayer request. And also um, Andrea Mills, who is on YouTube, is pregnant with her 10th child and is in the hospital with cancer in her liver and gallbladder. Oh gosh, such crazy stuff. Um, but the doctors feel it spread um, from somewhere else. So there's, she said there's multiple prayers that we can all be praying for. And she had again messaged and said, God is so good. And I thank him um, that Terry had a good day and his blood pressure finally was stable. So our prayers are working, guys, and it's so very awesome. Good morning, Miss Kelly. I'm excited to have Kelly joining us. For one, that means she's resting a little bit, maybe, and um, 
She has been going like wildfire all summer. Her homestead is very busy. So I'm thankful that she's able to join. If you have to jump off later, you know I will totally understand. She's got all kinds of preserving to do and animals to care to, so I uh, intend to. But guys, our prayers really matter. Our prayers are really reaching God's ears because we are more than three joined together. And, and not that that makes a difference. When we pray, God hears us individually. Whoa, I've got a dog under the table. Sorry. <laughs> But when we join forces, God is really, really present and, and really, really hears. And it gives, you know, it warms his heart to know that we are joining forces. So it's important. And it's important to have people that we can commune together with, that we can count on for prayers, and know that they're not just saying, I'm going to pray for you. And, and you wonder if they remember you throughout the week. You know, we have a tremendous community, and I am so proud of you guys. I am so excited by what we have built here, and um, I really want to continue to nurture that because what we have is powerful. Um, as you guys know, um, Kim, many of you have been praying for Kim and her husband Martin. He had passed two weeks ago. And uh, we just need to keep praying for Kim and her children. We're going to continue to pray for her and lift her. That's a very difficult challenge. And um, I just can't even begin to fathom. The other one I would really like um, extreme prayers going up for is my friend Jamie Spooner. Um, Jamie is the one whose son and husband were in the automobile accident in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho um, last week. And... Uh, uh, it was just awful. Uh, there wasn't much of the car left. Her, her son had survived the accident, but he didn't survive his injuries. So he passed away, I believe it was last Thursday. Her husband has been, um, he's stable. Uh, he had surgery last week in Seattle. He is now um, moved to Spokane. And he has a really extensive surgery going on on Thursday, tomorrow. So if we could please be lifting him, um, I believe it is a very, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's over a 10 hour surgery. It's a very extensive surgery. Um, actually uh, to reconstruct his skull and his face. So um, uh, I just can't imagine. My heart is just so sick for these people because um, you know today's topic is handling change. Imagine that kind of extreme change. Um, you know, not that Kim's was any easier um, with Martin in a coma. It still was a sudden onset. And, and then with Jamie and the sudden just tragic, you know, accident. And, you know, you got to look at these things in this regard. When it is time for us to go and when God calls us, God calls us in, in many different ways situations and circumstances and um, truly it is a blessing for both Martin and for Nick that they are in heaven um, but it leaves a lot of other people um, heart sick so there's lots of reasons to pray and uh, if we could just pray for uh, Tim Jamie's husband Tim tomorrow with this surgery I would so appreciate it um, I'd also like to keep the Martz family in our prayers um, with the loss of their 32 year old daughter last week, that was just also very unexpected. Um, so, you know, there's, we gotta value life guys. It can, it can change like this. And uh, I'm mentioning the prayers early on because if you're joining me today or you're watching the uh, uh, replay of this and you have prayers or you know somebody who has prayers, we are a community of praying people that will lift these people continuously and continue to pray for them. Um, so please don't hesitate to list your prayers. If you don't want to give the details, it's not required. Just mention that you need prayer. Also, you're welcome to pr uh, private message me um, if, if that's more comfortable for you. But please don't, don't be afraid to ever ask for prayer. It is not a weakness. It is a strength. It is uh, somebody that has great strength and inner strength to be willing to ask for prayer. We also, we need to keep Terry in our prayers. Terry is the one with the MRSA and who is healing. Also, if you could keep my mother-in-law, Glenna, in your prayers. She is experiencing some 
um, abdominal pains and they are thinking gallbladder so we want to just lift her and keep her in prayer she is uh, she's very near and dear to my heart so if we could pray for her and then our prayer list is very extensive um, so please check that it is in the description um, you can pray for them as a whole you can pray for them individually whatever works best for you but if you would please continue to keep these people in prayer I would so appreciate it I am sitting in the pilot seat here and I am seeing God's hand at work and working miracles in such great ways. I know Mona and Ken have some prayer requests too. I don't know for certain the specifics on those right now, but if you could lift them. And also Terry and June. Um, Terry uh, with some uh, shoulder injury and also just for their marriage and um, for what God's doing there because there again I can see God at work. And also please keep Chad in your prayers. Um, Miss Shelley says, I have been trying to do canning on my days off. I can, I can only get so much done in a limited time. Exactly, I hear that. Kelly says, I missed the first part, but we'll watch replay and add the new prayer request. Thank you, sweet friend. And I'm so glad to have you joining me. Kelly says, sitting waiting on the canner. Oh, canning the chicken today so far. Seven quarts of broth and 14 quarts of meat from with more to do yet. Awesome. Awesome. She did some butchering last week. They butchered their roosters and now she is, she put some in the freezer and I believe correct. And then she's canning the others to uh, get her broth and her chicken meat for on the shelves. There's nothing better. Um, last night we had deer meat out of a can that we canned and uh, enjoyed last night for dinner. Made it really nice to quickly throw together some barbecue. Um, if you could pray for us, we um, had treatments yesterday. Um, I am extremely sore to the touch. Uh, whew, I didn't realize how badly I needed a treatment. Um, the main thing was to get Glenn walking straight again and, and such dog keeps rattling the table. And so all three of us got treatments. Austin's a little under the weather today. He never had a full treatment like that and he needs to drink more. And the mountain man is sore. So if you could pray for us, we are on the mend though. That is good. We also have a showing of the house on Friday and we could really, really, really use your prayers on that. That this is the one. I, I've already thanked God for selling our home. I know that he's going to sell it. It's just a matter of when and his timing. Um, but we'll talk more about that later because that's part of the change and, and some of the other topics I want to discuss. Correct. Ten went in the freezer camp. Ten went in the freezer camp. I love that she says that. Um, this is Kelly. And 14 canning and 26 hens to butcher yet when the cool when cooler in September. Nice. So that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. But man, the rewards are great. And to be able to have that um, on the shelves. That is one thing that I am so greatly missing this year is being able to can. However, today I, and, and this week I have been doing a bunch of other things. So I'm going to take you into my kitchen here and show you some. Kelly says, praying for you, Glenn and Austin, and the house sale. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and I have something going on next Tuesday. I'm not sure if I can share that with you guys yet, but when I can share that with you, you guys will be the first to know. I'm going to spin this around. Okay, so this week has been busy. Um, let me see if I can do this while everything is in the way here. That is what I did earlier this week. There is the CD, the Trayer Wilderness Crazy CD Bread and a regular bread in there, as well as a boule, which is absolutely awesome. That was uh, made with the sourdough, which is right here, my sourdough starter. And I love this jar. This jar makes it really easy so that when I get to a point where I can't keep up with the sourdough, I can just close the lid and put it in the fridge. So that makes it wonderfully easy, and these containers are really nice. So that is my sourdough. I've got um, the remains of my red clover uh, sprouts in my sprouting jar. And I've got the starts of my horseradish. I'm going to make homemade horseradish. Again, thank you, Miss Tammy, for sharing from her garden. I will show you that. Um, right there, I have it soaking so that the dirt comes off. And I found that it's really easy to take a knife and just scrape the smaller pieces. And it uh, cleans them off really nice and uh, cleans them up that you can work with them real easily. 
But I also uh, planted some of that today. I'm gonna spin this back around. I also transplanted some of the horseradish that had really good roots and some sprouts on it um, into a pot. I also did our spearmint tea in a pot. Um, we did two pots of that and my comfrey plant. So that makes me really, really happy. That was something I was getting nervous about because I wasn't getting time to do it. Um, the mountain man helped me with that yesterday. Well, this morning we got yesterday we got potting soil. Today he helped me um, with that. So we got that all wrapped up. So things are coming around. But I thought I would share that with you. And I'm going to share something else with you. I have never done horseradish before. And um, I imagine Kelly and Tammy and, and Diana and, and Shelly, you ladies out there can say that there was a time when you never canned before and did all the things that you're doing. And I imagine you will also agree with me that the way you learn to do those things is by diving in. And that's what I want to encourage you guys to do, um, to dive in and learn these skills. The sourdough starter is a fabulous way when you live in a remote location and you have no access to yeast, you put a half a cup of water and three quarters of a cup of flour in a jar and you let it so that it's breathable. That's why the coffee filter's on the top of that with a rubber band on the top and you mix it very hard and you let it set overnight and then you feed it again the next morning with the same amount. And that keeps feeding that and that will eventually create a sourdough starter, which is in essence a uh, basically harvested yeast. You created a wild yeast mixture there. So if you don't have yeast and you wanna make a yeast bread, you can use sourdough to do that. It's really, really awesome. Now the boule that I made, and that is spelled B-O-U-L-L-E, or B-O-U-L-E, um, is a nice crunchy crusted bread with a really soft inside. Exactly, Kelly says, and it's a wonderful probiotic. Exactly. For those of you that struggle with gluten, two things we have found in um, our homesteading is that when you mill your own flours, um, the, the gluten is not as high, plus when you have a good quality wheat as well. Um, in addition to that, when you make sourdough, you are fermenting your, your uh, flour. So it is not as harsh on the stomach, not as um, high of a quality of gluten, and um, the enzymes in there uh, nurture your, your gut, providing good gut health. So if you do have a mild gluten um, intolerance, some people, I know um, Shelly has an extreme gluten intolerance, um, you really, you'll still probably need to be careful, but it is worth a try. And it is, it is fabulous. I absolutely love working with sourdough. I've, I've been wanting to do this all year and I, with everything going on, I'm like, I hate to start it and then have to pitch it or, you know, but you know what? I could gift it to somebody and, and we're going to talk more about living through the chaos. You guys are commenting. So let's see what everybody's saying. Good morning, Charles. Kelly says, absolutely self-taught for the most part. Some, um, is learned via help from experienced people. And that was in regard to my comment on learning new things, canning, uh, preserving, fermenting, all those things, you know, anything in life, drawing, anything in order to attain that skill and to, to be able to be good at it. It takes practice. It also takes being willing enough to take the first step to try and learn how to do it. Just saying hi and God's peace be with you. Well, thank you, Charles. I'm glad you popped in to say hello. All right, and Shelly says, I want to do a lot of tomato canning. Most tomato in the store are in tin cans and um, you're allergic to nickel. Yeah, so when you're allergic to nickel, that's just not a possibility. And canning tomatoes is very easy. And huh, this is one of two tomatoes that I was gifted yesterday by my dear friend Helen. And I asked the mountain man if he wanted some of the other one that I cut up and had, oh my gosh. There is nothing better to me in this whole world than a fresh tomato off the vine. I was so excited to have those. They're tiny, I don't care. Oh my goodness, such a good, good flavorful fruit. 
it's a fruit but man that was good and I am so missing my canning right now I would be canning um, six batches of chili sauce and my whole kitchen would be just filled with vegetables and I just don't have uh, the financial resources to be able to do that this year and my resources to get the produce are dwindling as well so I'm hoping as things progress that we will be able to find better resources and also get our garden and greenhouse going as we progress uh, in our future. Um, but this winter we are talking about doing uh, lettuces and greens in pots and also uh, growing some tomato plants. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that that is an option for just for edibles. And Tammy says me too. Um, and I imagine that had to do with the, I'm not sure, that was the response. So I'm not sure what that went with there exactly because it doesn't show me that. Um, Shelly says, I want to get into sourdough again also. So maybe that was the me too. I'm not sure. Um, Diana says, it's my understanding that the ancient grains like kamut and einkorn and spelt are also great for those who have a gluten intolerance. Yes. Very, very much so. And, and those ancient grains are so much better for us because they do not have all the garbage in them that we are consuming otherwise. So yes, very, very much so. Um, the einkorn is, is what I want to be working with um, in, in the future. Uh, it is a really, really good flour. So yes, so if you can incorporate that as well as doing sourdough with those um, flours, because you can do a sourdough starter with any kind of flour. I have already done it with uh, the gluten-free flours that we use, and they are a much thicker flour. Um, they are more dense, so I tend to have to put a little bit more water in those when I'm working with those to do a sourdough. Um, but once you get started in it, you start to learn the consistency. But the, the thing that you get excited about when you're creating a sourdough is the bubbles in there. Those bubbles indicate activity. Um, no different than when your um, yeast in your bowl with your oils and your sugar and your warm water start to sponge. It is the reactivity that's going and the activity that's going on in, in your um, uh, mixture. So I'm excited about my bubbles and, and to be able to use it like I have. Uh, Shelly says, this is one thing I am hoping to do is milling my own grains. Thanks for a list. Yeah, um, milling your own grains uh, and, and Shelly, you should have good luck with the einkorn. And there's a lot of grains that are naturally gluten free. Um, there is just some that we have used. Chickpea flour, um, buckwheat flour. Um, there was a brown one and I am at a loss. Quinoa flour, um, oat flour. So not just milling the grain, uh, you know, your uh, wheat berries, but you can mill oatmeal, you know, your oats, your wild oats, and, and create a flour. So having all these things on hand also enables you to keep going and still be able to make things even if it's not with an actual wheat flour. Um, we have all of those things on hand because of the mountain boy and his uh, sensitivity to the wheat flour, which praise God he is good with now. Um, he still struggles with the dairy, but not the, the gluten and the wheat. So that's awesome. Bowser boy. Child, say hello. Hi. <laughs> you coming in to get something to eat? Yeah. Okay. 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 Hello, Angela. Good morning. So being able to do all of these things, learning how to do these things, and you don't have to do them all at once. But learning how to do these things and diving in is um, really important. It, it teaches us life skills. It teaches us things to fall back on. It's a level of preparedness. It's also a level of knowledge. You know, there are many tree barks and underbarks out here that make flour as well. And so to have those resources on hand and to know the knowledge and to know how to do these things is priceless information. So. I encourage you always, you guys know that, I'm always, always encouraging you to delve in and try new things. 
and and many people are afraid of canning I'm going to put some links later um, for some of my canning videos canning is very easy it is um, because of the equipment that is used uh, it does create a level of anxiety for many people and um, it's really really not a difficult task and it is it, it is truly a very easy thing to do um, it can be time consuming because you can only fit so many jars in there so Kelly will attest to this with what she's doing today um, we did 113 quarts of venison um, like four or five years ago uh, when the mountain man got his moose and um, that was a lot of canning that was like I think that went for like three or four days um, not to mention filling the jars but running the canners and I do have two canners two of the pressure canners and then I also have two or three of the water bath canners so having having those having the resources having the setup to run them um, makes it really nice to have these things on hand um, like I've said to you when I've been downsizing I've been downsizing and getting rid of things that I don't need but those are things that are priceless to us in our preparedness and our self-sustainability so having that equipment too and if you have not canned previously you can get um, equipment at yard sales at thrift stores the thing you need to check is the pressure gauge as well as the um, the rubber uh, help me guys you know it's like a big grommet basically around the top uh, just to make sure it's not dry rotted so that you're um, you have solid closure and no air leaks good morning Craig welcome Kelly says I will only use a gauged canner the other weighted canner are, are scary to me yeah those big ones I don't have ones like that either I have the gauge but I but they work the same. It's just that they look freaky as all get out. And I totally, thank you, Courtney. The seal, thank you. Yes, rubber seal. Thank you, Angela. The brain is not cooperating today. Uh, Kelly says, yes, you can take it to a local extension office um, and, and they will test it yearly. Uh, the extension offices are, are in your county, so you can look up by county. Oftentimes, like for us, it's in, within the courthouse. Um, and. For us, there are some master gardeners and, and also um, master canners, and they teach classes here locally. So you can find access to local help, not just on the internet, if you're the kind of person that likes to be taught hands-on. So don't, you know, don't negate being able to learn because you don't have somebody to teach you. There are resources around. Um, Shelly says same as me I need to find a place that will check my gauge yeah and it's not a bad idea to have them checked um, just to be sure that they are working properly and, and running smoothly but canning is not it's overwhelming to get started but once you get started you will never look back I have never heard of the extension office in Canada yeah I'm not sure if that is something that is available um, in Canada but it is available in the States so that is definitely an option um, and check at the local colleges too um, the, Idaho, the Idaho College has all kinds of unique classes um, they have gatherings where they take people out to go foraging and plant identifying and all kinds of things that are not part of you know you don't have to be uh, a student in the college these are extra things they offer the community so it's pretty awesome um, the thing is to, to just check around see what is available as a resource in your area oh Jill says we don't have it to Shelly okay so Canada does not have the extension offices um, but check around at your local colleges check around um, in your county uh, it does not ever hurt to see what is what kind of resources are available to you I'm trying to find a plus place that will check my gauge interesting yeah I don't know what Canada offers but um, that's interesting I might do a little digging um, I know you know Alaska being part of the United States um, has a lot of different resources too but because they are so their towns are so spread out and so small 
Um, I don't know what is available there either. But in the main part of the United States, um, these are things that sh are available to you. You just need to check around. If your county doesn't have one, check the next surrounding counties and see what is available to you. But I highly encourage you guys to give these things a try. And don't be afraid. Um, when it comes to doing sourdough and fermenting things, um, there are some tips and tricks to that and I can put some resources down below for you guys as far as things to look for um, that could cause your um, fermented items to go bad. Uh, but it is very easy to get them started. Fermented vegetables are awesome. I love fermenting carrots and um, cucumbers and zucchini. Craig says you'll never be sorry being able to can your own food. Amen. There is just such a different taste to um, canned food. And I like Shelly, even though I don't have um, allergic reactions to the metals, I don't like that my food is sitting in metal. Um, I have had problems with heavy metals in the past, and you don't know how much of that leaches into your food. Jill says, I found it easier to just replace my gauge. It was under $15. That's true also. Um, they are available on Amazon very cheaply and um, you can also get them directly from the company. And if you're concerned and you don't have resources available to you, that is certainly um, a good option. As Also, there are um, secondary weights available on Amazon for the items as well, for your canners. Um, Sometimes the weights that come on the canners um, are not uh, weighted. There, there are different weighted... Uh, I know what I'm trying to say. Like I said, today's not a good day. I think it's a result of my treatment yesterday. Um, that's why I'm going to blame it on anyway. But you can get different weights to put on there to keep your pressure. And... Um, that is something you can look into as well. Uh, Kelly said, I'm switching to Tatler lids. These are the BPA free. Tatler lids are really amazing because what she's, what she's talking about is it is a plastic BPA lid and it has a rubber uh, grommet. And so instead of using your regular ball canning jars or your Kerr canning jar rings, uh, flats, you would use these Tatler lids. And they are available on Amazon. You can find them by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Tatler, T-A-T-T-L-E-R. What's nice about them is if you are out and about in a remote location, notice that that's where my mind is always, that if we are out and about in a remote location, that would be the same that would apply that if all of a sudden things were no longer available. Um, these can be used multiple times. Um, pretty much endless times. You gotta check your um, seal to make sure that it's not dry rotting at all. But those are an amazing uh, thing to have as well. Uh, let's see here. Expensive, so doing it a little every year. Exactly, yeah, just, and when they go on sale, occasionally they do have sales, and when they do, I typically announce that. Um, Shelly says, I always hear that it takes so much time, but these same people never complain when they can just go into the other room and, and grab stuff off the shelves. Absolutely. You know what? I never um, care about the time. What I need to do is just prepare for that time. When I am doing that, my canning, I am sitting here at the table and I am either working on my computer, writing, doing something, but that I'm in close proximity that I can hear the canner because when you start canning, it becomes... Um, more of a uh, heard thing than a visual thing because you can hear the pressure changing in your canner. So still it doesn't hurt to look at it and, until you get used to canning, but it becomes something that you get in tune to listening for. You can hear uh, changes in your canner and if the pressure's rising or dropping just by listening. So um, when, you, when you can, you just learn to set that time aside knowing that you're going to be canning and if you're like I am you prepare to do something um, close at hand so even if it would be you know doing some of my knitting or whatever it was because oftentimes we're canning in the fall our meats and that so 
you just have to plan ahead. I like, like Shelly said, there is no complaining when you're pulling stuff off the shelves. And my shelves are getting bare and it makes me sad, but I know that I will be able to restock them. Jill says, my local hardware carries all the canning parts. Yeah, isn't that awesome? I'm glad to hear that Canada does that too. Here in Idaho is the same thing. We came here and we went to the hardware store and I was just so elated to see in the middle of winter all the canning supplies that they keep on the shelves because there is a lot you can do during winter. I have many friends who have multiple freezers so that when they are harvesting and they don't have time to harvest and can it all that they put it in their freezer and then go back during the winter months and dehydrate and can their food so you still need that but in other states that's not always the case I know in Pennsylvania you can always find canning stuff on the shelves during the winter months so this is pretty cool to be able to have those resources and of course we've got Amazon and Amazon has all that stuff too uh, let's see here I started canning with the old glass lids same process I think awesome with the rubber and and the glass lid yes and I have I have some of those too awesome 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 yes Shelly you will like you'll like those tattlers uh, let's see here been making pie filling and the pop is not the same as the jars your, your sound is different when they are when they are uh, finishing the sealing process is that what you're saying knowing your elevation is important too because you need to know um, for the weight needed exactly yes um, we're at like 3,000 feet so you know when I can I base it on that and and that is extremely important because that makes a huge difference not only in canning but some of your recipes too when you're baking and when you're trying to um, get your breads to rise and things elevation can play a huge role in that as well I freeze what I can and then I can in the winter awesome awesome yeah if you guys have freezer space and you don't have the time now that is the ideal thing to do don't miss your opportunities to be able to get things I had huge bags of elderberries in my freezer like the first or second year here and then um, when my mother-in-law came in November or October we were juicing while she was here so yeah don't miss out I am at sea level like maybe a hundred feet above Wow so I wonder how you know how that plays a role too for you as far as um, your baking do you make a lot of bread Shelly It's just interesting though, and it's things that people don't think about. So um, I think it was Kelly that mentioned it. Thank you for bringing that up. I want to show you guys something else. In the description below, um, I'll share that in a second. Let me just show you what I'm going to show you here. Right there is cabbage soup. It has chicken broth, um, celery, a whole stalk of celery. It has a whole head of cabbage, it has onions, and it has garlic in there. And um, the reason I wanted to show you that, I'm going to spin this back around. It is actually really yummy. Um, I don't know what made my brain jump on this, but um, down below, I shared a link. It says lose 15 pounds in seven days. Now, I've lost six by eating that soup and that is something else that you can can uh, that's why my mind jumped because you don't have to just can like Shelly is doing pie filling that makes it awesome because you can pull that off make a pie but you can also use it for so many other things we use that kind of stuff in our meats and in our roasts in the winter months um, but you can also can meals and you can can soups and you can can your meats but to be able to can meals is really ideal as well. And that is what um, made me think of that is that with the soups like that, you can do the same thing. So, you know, people just think very limited when they think of canning that you can only can just tomatoes and green beans, you know, and everything has to be separate. But there is so much you can do. The book that Shelly mentioned right off the bat was the Blue, the, um, the Blue Book by Ball. And they are amazing. The canning books and the recipes they have are just amazing. 
Yes, crisp sauces for cheesecakes. Awesome. Yes, so much. So that one thing can be used for so many different things. And I use my jellies and my sauces the same way. Uh, we do, um, and juices. I do elderberry juice, um, but my jellies and my jams, all of that get used in such diverse ways um, in other meals. Like I can make a nice pastry crust and put my strawberry jelly on top of that and bake that. Oh, you guys are making me hungry. Stop, I'm eating cabbage soup. <laughs> but the cabbage soup, since I brought it up, there is a YouTube video link down below. It says lose 15 pounds in seven days. This diet is, is actually really nice and I gained weight when I got sick and my body has just been hanging on tight to it and I don't believe in diet pills I don't believe in um, you know starving yourself either and to begin with I don't eat a lot to begin with which could be part of my problem that I'm not eating enough to keep my metabolism going but I also can't eat too much more than what I already am and at the end of this diet, there are the last three days, it's a seven day diet, the last three days, it's a pound and a half of meat, the third last day, the second last day, it's a pound and a half of meat, and the last day, it is a pound and a half of rice. I couldn't eat it all. I could not eat it all. And then you eat as much of the soup as you want. Today is day three for me, so I can have certain fruits and certain vegetables, as many as I want, um, and as much soup as I want. And then tomorrow is bananas, which I think the way they are doing that is it's spiking your sugar on the fourth day uh, with the bananas, because bananas are high in sugar. And it's also um, doing milk that day. But I did, I lost six pounds, and I haven't been able to do that in a long time. So I'm real excited about that. Now it says 15 pounds in a day, and the guy did say that this recipe is made for people that are um, extremely obese and needing to have um, heart surgery, and they are trying to quickly reduce their weight so that they can go through surgeries and, and such things. So. Um, that is why there is such a large weight loss um, in some. For me, I don't have a lot to lose, but I know I will feel comfortable and better at a lesser weight, and that's why I think that it's just um, a small amount of weight. But again, you also don't want to lose a lot of weight fast if you want to lose um, weight, because the faster you lose it, the faster it goes back on. So keep that in mind. Why am I sharing this today? Because I know that there's so many people out there that want to lose weight. This is a healthier way to do it because you are eating wholesome foods and, and being able to drop some weight. So I just wanted to share it with you, but also it was a good uh, fit into what we were talking about as well as being able to can something like that. Um, that is my second batch of soup because I do eat a lot of vegetables and so I've been eating a lot of the soup and I do feel really good and those six pounds feel good being off. It's also a great detox for me because the toxins and the silicone are stuck in my fat so the more that I can lose what is hanging on to me the better and healthier I will be. So let's see here. Uh, Jill says, oh here, plum jam is a wonderful glaze, that's what Shelly said. And Jill says grape jelly is a great base on barbecue sauce. Awesome. Awesome. I would have never thought to use the grape jelly in barbecue sauce. We use homemade ketchup and maple syrup as well as our spices. Jill says I want to gain weight. Then don't use my recipe. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what though. I don't eat a lot of meat. I mean I eat meat but... That pound and a half, it almost killed me. Same with the rice. I love rice. I will eat brown rice. Um, but I don't eat large quantities of that kind of food. So it was it was almost painful. Um, Shelly says, I'm not much for grape anything. When in high school, had a tour of Welch and the smell overwhelmed me. Oh, I can believe that. I used to work in a candy company and the smell of the chocolate and they made caramel crunch and the smell of that caramel was like nauseating. It actually, it did not smell good. So I can totally, <laughs> I totally get that. And Jill says, I can see why. Okay, uh, let's see here. Tammy says, 
Okay, so you guys are communicating, so Tammy's gonna send somebody some. Uh-oh, you lost me. Hopefully I'm back, am I back? Hello, hello, you guys let me know if I'm still on the screen. Okay, still here for me, all right, awesome. Awesome, so I wanted to share that with you because last week really rocked my world. Um, I guess being a mom, I am a tough warrior woman. I am, I do crazy stuff, but I wear my heart on my sleeve. And um, seeing the picture of that car crash really, really got the best of me last week. Um, it just touched home. We have so much change going on right now. And things are up in the air. And I just can't tell you how grateful I was that I knew where my family was when I saw that picture. And my heart really went out to my friend Jamie. Um, she's a sweet, sweet lady. And I'm glad that she has a strong faith in the Lord. But it really, really hit home. Um, watching Kim go through her walk as well has been really... Um, growing me in a lot of different ways and then to have our friends lose their 32 year old daughter she was autistic as well and she was in for a simple procedure and had a heart attack and they couldn't revive her you know life is precious life is short and we aren't promised anything and you know we are all we all go through and are going through various crazy things and we all have different personalities and ways of handling things. And, you know, I've been sharing some of our realities. These are things that we don't think about. These are things that we are looking past. But I want to share with you guys so you can understand the true reality of what I am living out right now. If my house doesn't sell before winter... I truly do not know or have any guarantee that we will still own this house. So we could very easily lose this house if it does not sell before winter. If it does not sell before winter, we are not prepared for winter here. Not at all. But we are truly trusting God because there isn't anything we can do to change our circumstances right now. Um, our preparation for winter um, would require funding for food and for propane. Um, firewood is not a problem. That would be just our time and our energy, and we're fully capable of that. That's not a problem. Um, Shelley says the only guarantee in life is that when you are born, you will die. The unknown is when and how. Yeah, exactly. We do not have any guarantees. Now, the reason I'm bringing up and sharing um, our circumstances is because we have a choice every day to decide what we are thinking about and how we handle change. Now, these things are big things. These are life-changing things that I'm talking about. You know, um, losing our house, uh, that means that we would walk away with nothing and still have extreme debt. It would mean um, trying to figure out where to go with what we do have left. And um, we were blessed with a dear friend offering us a 40-foot 18-wheeler box. That is huge. We were blessed with a family, um, one of our, mem our community members, offering us their home as a respite for the winter months. These are God. This is truly God. And... I believe those things have been offered to us because of our faith. Our faith is huge, strong, and fully entrusting God for our outcome. Now, I could wake up every morning and be sick of these, you know, that these things are just weighing on me. But I'm choosing not to. I am choosing to live my life through the chaos. I am choosing to wake up and be happy about my day. I've been blessed with another day. I've been blessed with the fact that I'm breathing and I'm still functioning. I might be sore today, but I am I'm alive. My family is alive. My family loves me and I love my family. Um, despite what might be happening around us and the uncertainties around us, 
I am choosing not to think about them. There is something very great and very strong and very much proven that when you think of the positive things in your life, you draw those things to you. If I sat here and I focused on all the negative things, what do you think my life would look like? For starters, what kind of mindset would I be in? But what would I be drawing to myself? And you know, it's really awesome that my family is on the same page and we are in this and on this journey together and we have learned to think and focus the same way. So we are all focusing on an amazing future. We are focusing and thanking God daily for selling our home, even though it still hasn't sold. We are thanking him for what he's going to do. So, you know, part of being thankful is not just thanking him for what he's done, but thanking him even more so for what he's going to do, because we know it's going to be grand, because that's how he operates. We have a lot of change going on right now. God is opening doors and God is stirring things up. And um, I know that the things that happened last week were a part of that stirring. Um, what he was stirring in me, the emotions he was stirring in me. And um, he, was, he was helping me to think about things. Um, the mountain boy has some amazing things going on that we will find out more about um, this week and next. Um, he is training for a job here locally right now. There is a test coming in October, beginning of October, um, that would enable him to get a really awesome job locally here and anywhere that they are doing timber. But he also has a desire to do small motor and motor repair. And there are doors opening there also. And it, these changes could mean um, a matter of 500 miles apart for us or 2,500 to 3,000 miles apart for us. And um, I have to say I am truly blessed. I think all of us parents are very blessed with our children. Some of them, um, you know, uh, tend to have different personalities than others. They're all unique. They're all different. I am truly blessed with a young man that I have such an amazing relationship with. That and, and don't get me wrong. We have those heated discussions. We have disagreements. We have disconnects. But we have a relationship where we both walk away from those situations and we, we've learned to walk away from those situations before they're too heated, to just think about what each other said, ponder those things, and, and get back together at a later time and converse. And, you know, it has been such a rewarding thing um, to be a parent, to be a mother, and to just have such an amazing relationship. I feel so, so grateful to have such an amazing relationship with my son. And I certainly wish for that with my daughter, but that's not something that I've had with my daughter um, as a result of different personalities and different uh, desires uh, on her part. So I just feel blessed, but I feel that God has been um, nurturing me and working in me and guiding me to be prepared for some major heavy duty changes. And that also is heavy duty changes for the mountain man and I in embracing a life for ourselves, just the two of us as empty nesters. Some of you can relate to that. Um, and it's a whole new ball game. It's a whole new walk. It's different. Um, but the mountain man and I have these great dreams and desires, and we are the kind of people that we don't like to leave stones unturned. So when I read yesterday's devotional, it just, I just laughed at how God is working. And I want to encourage you guys because I know many of you are experiencing different types of changes in your lives too. And many of you are walking through some ugly stuff too. I know we're not the only ones. 
And, um, you know, through Kim's uh, steadfast sharing on Facebook, I realized something that I was kind of um, keeping from because I felt that my struggle here when I would type it and talk, when I talk about it here, I feel like I'm expressing myself much more fully than I can in words. And when I would type things about my day, I just felt like it sounded so much like drama and, and negativity, even though I was imparting, you know, putting in there as well, the good things that were happening, it just sounded like so much drama. And I personally stay away from the drama. So I wasn't sharing. And I realized that through Kim sharing wholeheartedly all her feelings, the hard, the good, the bad, the ugly, how much she was nurturing me. And I feel like maybe I've robbed people of some of that with our walk, those that don't watch my videos. And I really want to start sharing more um, of the nitty gritty because, and, and next week we're going to talk about you guys sharing your story. There's something so huge in that. And, um, you know, Diana sees uh, Kim sharing her story too. And, and I think she'll agree there is a lot of value to be taken away from somebody that shares very vulnerably. And, you know, when I share these things and when the mountain man shares things, we're not looking for handouts. We're not looking for pity. We are trying to help others that are walking through things, even if they're different, but they're hard. We're hoping to be a light, and I hope that that's what I've, what we've been uh, sharing, and that you're gleaning from what we're sharing. Um, so when it comes to change, you know, how do you look at change? Some people get very anxious, get uh, very worked up by change. The mountain boy, when he was young, if there was a change in his schedule at school, like all of a sudden they had a. Uh, an assembly, he was toast. He went into major anxiety attack, verbal, loud, physical outbursts. And this was when he was seven, nine. And it, it took a lot to help him overcome that, but he has completely overcome that. As a matter of fact, now he, he's the opposite. He doesn't react at all. Like he's, he's just cool with everything, which is, is good. I think in his perspective and in, in, from his eyes, he just takes it all in and just rolls with it, which I'm, I'm grateful. I think that's part of what he saw in me. And I wanna share that with you guys so that when change comes into your life, regardless if it's good, bad, or ugly, that we, we know how to handle it and that we learn to not be so distraught by the change or the circumstances we are walking out that we forget to live and enjoy life. I have seen some of that here in our, in the middle of these years. You know, we're almost here a decade. Um, May of next year, we would be here 10 years. And, and there was a part while I was sick, before I, I found out what was going on, that there was so much upheaval and so much stress and so much dysfunction that I know we weren't enjoying our lives. We were stressed by our circumstances and we weren't living fully this way. And, and it's not a good place to be. It's not a pleasant place to be when you can't find happiness or, or something good in your life because you're going through something that has taking your feet out from under you. And, and that is where we could be right now, but praising God that we are standing firm on our rock and we are trusting him. And I want you guys to learn to be able to trust him that much that you don't think about what you're walking through. I mean, sure, I have to go to try to pay bills and I don't have money to do it. It's a little concerning. It's uh, it can make you anxious. You know, there are parts where I can avoid some of the, the, the scary and, and the crazy, but for the most part, the day-to-day -day of my life is very joyful because I am doing the things I wanna do, I'm doing the things I need to do, and I'm doing them with a joyful heart. 
And that is what is making the world of difference in my life right now. Now, Shelly says you are being the mighty river. Better to be a mighty river than a stagnant pond. Exactly. Stagnant ponds stink. <laughs> and I do not want to stink. I want to make a mark on this earth in an extremely positive way. And thank you. That was a really good analogy. And that I like that, Shelly. And Tammy says, we have a huge change coming up and I am hoping I can handle it well. Well, think of my words and uh, you know we will be praying for you. And I am sure that you will handle it well because I know that your focus is very similar to mine. Um, Diana says, I have to go. Craig and I will listen later this afternoon. Love you, girl. Have a good afternoon. Thank you for joining us as long as you have and send a hello to Craig. And I'll chat with you later. All right. I want to read the devotional from yesterday. And with all that I've shared, I think you will understand why this hit home so much for me. And Tammy, this will, you'll get this. All right, so, no more same old, same old. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Do not remember the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. In today's scripture, God says he is doing a new thing. As you move into the future, he has for you. You will encounter all kinds of new opportunities and challenges. The days ahead will be full of new experiences, things you have never done before. You may not know how to do them, but you will learn. Everything you are doing today was new to you at one time, and look, now you can do it. What were we talking about before? That's as simple as creating a sourdough mixture, but this could be life-changing as well. So as you learn how to do the sourdough mixtures and sprouting and canning, you're able to walk into the bigger things in life with a little bit more boldness. Continuing to face new challenges and develop new abilities is extremely important to your growth and maturity. As you walk with God into your future, you will hear him say, you have not done this before, but don't be afraid. I am taking you to a place you have never been before. I am going to ask you to do something you don't know how to do. God has already been where he is leading you and he has prepared the way. Step out in faith and you will experience the faithfulness of God. We think and say it's time for a change. I need something new. And then we hesitate to embrace that new thing when it comes. I talked about that, being afraid to step out of your comfort zone. You're missing out, guys. If you are ready for something new and fresh, don't be afraid to embrace it when it comes. Don't stay trapped in the past. Let go of what lies behind and press into the great future God has planned for you. I can promise you, God is with you. He will lead you. He will strengthen you. He will help you. Love God today, it says. With God's help, I will embrace every new thing he brings into my life. So guys, it's a choice. It is such a choice on how we handle everything. And I mean everything in our lives. And you know, it, it, there is nothing wrong with having a dysfunctional day, a bad day, being in a bad place for a couple days. But when you're aware that you are in that place, you need to trust the good Lord and lean on him to help you get out of that place. The other beautiful thing is when you have people you can call upon that you know will help lift you out of that place, that is huge because sometimes, we all know, it's hard to get out of that place sometimes by our own capabilities. That's what God is for. Shelley says, when there are changes in your life, it is much like a death. You grieve what you used to have. You can somewhat prepare. Let me see if I can read the rest of that on here. Exactly. 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 That is a really, really good analogy of that, Shelly. Um, you know, especially the bad things in our lives. Um, overcoming those things is, is a stage that we have to mourn. 
and um, we have to we have to also learn to be happy to happy in what we've accomplished and acknowledge our growth that is huge we have to learn to acknowledge our growth in things hmm <laughs> oh, there we go. You can somewhat prepare for the change by knowing that, she says. Yeah, exactly. You know, and uh, fear holds us back so much. And anything negative that pops in our heads, and trust me, guys, in order to stay in this place that I am choosing to be, when the enemy pops in with something negative in my head, I have to make a conscious effort to say, look, no, that's not how I wish to think. That is not how I am wishing to think. And, and be able to redirect that. And, and, and that is a hard thing to do, is catching ourselves in that place. Because you get in that place, it's just like when somebody goes to work. I've seen this happen a lot, and it's kind of funny to watch sometimes. Um, and this is just people messing with people. I've seen it happen both ways. One, someone really doesn't feel good and they go to work and, and somebody says to them, oh my goodness, you look horrible. You shouldn't be here. And then that's what goes into their mind. That's what they start thinking about. And then they start thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't be here. And they start, and they start to feel worse. And then they do end up going home. I have seen somebody mess with somebody else where they came to work feeling fine. They were not sick. And somebody instilled that thought into them. Oh my gosh, you look awful. Are you feeling all right today? they were just messing with them. That person went home before lunch. Our brains and our mindset and our thoughts have so much more of an impact on us than we could ever imagine until you start testing it. And see, I'm one of those crazy people, I guess. I'm testing. I am testing through my growth to see what I am capable of and to be empowered to be more capable of what I am creating in my life. And uh, I want to instill that in you guys to be able to handle change and discomfort and bad circumstances in a positive light and in a way that will um, help you flourish and also not bring down your health because our negativity and our thoughts and our ways of handling things affect our health in such a huge way. So it's so important that we think of these things. And, and I just can't tell you how much last week I was affected by those things that happened. I mean, I am a believer and I, and I think this way normally anyway, you know, that there are always other people out there suffering more than I am. And that keeps me in check to not get into a woe is me place. I don't like being there and I don't want to be there. And it's easy because once you start thinking that way, the enemy, oh, has a field day. So it's important that we realize what we want in life and what we want to achieve and how we want to achieve it. What we want to look like. Um, I posted something this week. On, on Facebook that um, you know we are not here to please other people we are here to be walking out what God wants us to be walking out and the only person we should be pleasing is him and that is my mindset is that I want to be pleasing to him I want my path and my walk and my thoughts and my drive and and whatever I've got going on no matter what my circumstances is to let him shine through. I always say about, you know, when you get squeezed, that God comes out. Well, this is a spot where we are being squeezed. And, you know, I said about us, you know, that there's a good chance that we will lose our home. If we lose our home, and I'm just, this is not my mindset, but these are just some realities. If we were to lose our home, we would still have all of our debt. We would not have the money to get to the home that Elizabeth has offered for us. So we would have to set up a tent and we would need to live in a wall tent through winter here. Now last year, there was a point where there was four feet of snow on the ground and six feet had dropped. 
but because of temperature fluctuations and things, we had four feet of snow on the ground. That's a lot for a tent to hold. That's a lot to have surrounding your tent. Now we've done it before. We had a foot of snow on the ground when we moved out of the tent. But you know what guys, if it comes down to that, I will still be sharing. I will still be communicating with you one way or another. And uh, I will be looking at life the same way. I will be living through the chaos. That has, the wall tent has a wood stove. I can sit and draw. I can, I can write. I have a lot of books started. So, you know, it's not being caught in the negativity and the woe is me and the what could happen. I could what could myself every day, every minute of every day right now, but why? You know, why would I want to do that? The sun is shining. I have great woods to get out into. I have my family here. We play games. We do things. We hang out. We communicate with each other. We spend time with each other. You know, I, I refuse to allow my circumstances to own me. And I like the way Shelly put that. Shelly, that's getting written down in my journal today. That was awesome. Oh, speaking of which, I'm excited about this. Look at this. You know how I couldn't, I've never been able to keep a journal? Well... Let me see, I think that's today. Yep, okay, so there's today. I'm gonna be starting a new journal soon to finish off my year. I am so excited. I am so excited to be able to keep this going and it's so fulfilling and so enjoyable. And like I said, now I'm putting my art into my journal. It's just it's very big growth for me. I really, really am enjoying it. Now I wanna read something else to you. Um, Diana shared this with me. She tagged me in this and I thought this was just so great. I love it. The longer the tea bag sits in the cup, the stronger the tea. The more God's word saturates our minds, the clearer our grasp on what's important to him and the stronger our prayers. The stronger are our prayers. Is that not awesome? That's just, and that's where I'm at. I want to be saturated. I want to be saturated by him, by his love, by knowing that and walking it out that, that he has a good plan for us. You know, we are still on this earth and that indicates that he has a plan for us, that he's not done with us and that we have purpose. We all have great purpose. Please know that we ha all have great purpose, regardless what we are doing. You need to know that and you need to believe that. We touch lives every day in random ways, in ways that we would never ever think that we could possibly touch a life, but you don't know that. Your words matter, your actions matter, and we are here for, with a purpose. So keep that in mind. This is meant to be thought provoking, and I hope that it is. Imagine getting to heaven and God saying, before I laid the foundations of the earth, I thought of you and of the days you would live on earth. I planned out the people and the places I would give you. I laid out your neighbors and your workplace, the places you would attend school, and your family. I laid out enough days to do all the good works that I purposed for you, and I equipped with you all you would need to accomplish those purposes here. I filled you with my spirit to encourage and remind you and lead you. I gave you my word so you would know me and know what to do. I gave you people to run with and people who needed me. Now let's talk about how all that went. I love that. How thought provoking is that? How many of us are bypassing some of the things that he puts in our path because we're not ready for that yet? It's, uh, that, that's requiring too much of me to step out of myself to do that particular task. I'm afraid. Um, that's not who I am. I don't speak boldly to people in the grocery store line, even though I can tell that person really needs Jesus. That was awesome. To me, that is just really, really awesome and really makes me want to step up my game even more to be sure that I am doing his will. And when you really think about it that way, 
that he puts all these people in our path. And I truly believe that. I truly believe there are no coincidences in our life and there is no such thing as luck. They are ordained and they are already planned. And he has this all lined up. He knows what he has in store for us. We can choose to be um, diligent and uh, really in tune with what's going on in our surroundings or, and, and bold, or we can choose to be fearful. I think I shared with you guys before, there is one thing that I really regret. Um, there's not too many. But there is one thing I regret, and that is when Austin got his dirt bike, the fella that he got the bike from had really injured his bike uh, back on that bike, um, the one that he got in pieces, and that that uh, he, his life totally changed. He was in uh, chronic pain as a result of that motorcycle accident, and I wanted so much to just put my hands on him and pray for him. Oh, such a strong, strong feeling. But I could see how Glenn was nurturing him and talking to him and I just expected Glenn to do it and I didn't want to take away his glory and, and maybe what God might have been instilling in him and what I realized when we left and it never happened that that was for me. So I feel that. I feel that every day. That's one regret I have. That's one thing that I didn't do that I definitely felt and I could have put my hands on him or said we'd really like to pray for you and maybe Glenn would have stepped up and prayed and that would have been okay but I maybe I was supposed to initiate it so when you have those really strong overbearing feelings like you're supposed to do something or if you're doing something wrong and you're supposed to do it right and you don't um, those are strong that's that's the Holy Spirit in us pushing us to do things and you know it's all part of our circumstances you know maybe um, Shelly has said to me that she feels that there's something more we need to do here in Idaho or in this area before our house sells she said that to me previously and I think about that in the back of my mind that's always there because God does talk to us through people and sometimes he gives people messages to relate to us so I take that very you know I'm, I'm very open to that and um, I, th I think about that in my walk I think about that in everything that I do you know I really try to be in tune with what the Holy Spirit is leading me and guiding me to do and I, I feel the same way when I'm on here and I'm live you know I, before I get on here with you guys I pray that God uses me in a big way and, and that he gives me the right words that it's not me speaking from the flesh that it's him just pouring out of me and I've yet to get on here and feel like it was me I walk away and I shake my head that I just was able to keep sharing you know that if you guys only knew when I first started doing this how hard it was for me to have a conversation with somebody face to face I just couldn't keep my head I couldn't keep my my thoughts and and to see God working through me it was just so amazing so you know he's present he's present here and I pray that through my words that he touches your lives um, with the things that you either have going on now or what might be coming ahead that you know is coming ahead and you might need to plan for live life through the chaos there is always going to be chaos there is always going to be something and Something that's really neat that I want to share, I wish I could share it with you, but it's through um, a Patreon um, a person that we follow. So it's not something I can share. But The Boss of the Swamp is on YouTube. And uh, he talks greatly about positivity as well. He's, uh, we're extreme kindred spirits. We think the same way, we live the same way. And it's neat to see things not only happening for us, but happening for other like-minded people. And he was sharing how important it is, like his positivity and his life works this way. His whole life, he has been beating to a different drum. People wanted him to be a certain thing in life and that wasn't right for him. And he knew it wasn't right for him. And, and he kept reaching for his dreams despite people not understanding him. And the man has attained everything that he's ever dreamed of. There's very few things. Uh, a couple things now that he's still working on, but the big things in life he has attained. And the reason he feels he attains those things 
is because never in his mind does he think he can't have it. He believes he will have it and he knows he will have it. It may not be now, but it will be later and it will, and it will maybe require other things to line up for it to manifest. But because he believes he can have it and because he believes in God to open those doors, he has had all of these things. And after I read this yesterday, I had the mountain boy listen to that video. And he came over to me and he said, you know, mom, he goes, I really needed to hear that. He goes, that really makes me believe and feel that what I'm dreaming to do here will happen. And it just made my, I love that stuff. I love that stuff. I love seeing God at work. And I knew that God was wanting me to share that with him because I knew I've said all the same exact things to this boy and he doesn't, he didn't receive them the same. So I let him listen to the boss who was saying the exact same thing that I've been saying just from a different person and it sunk in and it touched and it reached him and it is igniting his fires and sometimes that's what we need is through other people so we shouldn't disengage and disregard what other people have to say because those things can be the powerful stepping stone that will produce what we need it to produce or to get us where we need to go to that next step. And just believing that we can accomplish things. So many of us don't believe in ourselves because of our past. Our past has ingrained uh, poor self-esteem, poor inability to feel that we are capable, um, and, and all that negative stuff that holds us back. But when we are able to step past that and be what we are supposed to be and think the way we are supposed to think, it is just tremendously amazing. It is amazing. So I want to encourage you guys. Thank you, Tammy. She says, Austin is going to do great things. I totally, totally believe that. And I am just so very excited. Look, he's walking upright. He can move. Ooh, nice black hands. <laughs> I was just checking. I saw Shelly posted something. <laughs> so, oop, I just got rid of the comments. <laughs> I'm dangerous. So I want to encourage you guys. Live through your chaos. Whether your chaos is a day of uncomfortableness or whether you're really walking out something really long and hard you know um, we we all go through different journeys we all have different walks we can never understand or try to fathom what other people's walks are like unless we have actually walked through them ourselves so we have to show compassion we have to show um, grace and mercy and forgiveness along this journey too to keep us going and to be able to live life through the chaos you know, those are those negative things are things that hold us back from being able to to be able to do this. And I just want to see you guys being able to live your lives um, to the fullest and to be able to get out from underneath the rock and the pressure and the, the weights of uncomfortableness that life throws our way. Like I said, there is going to be uncomfortable, ugly things coming our way all the time. We are not. Uh, promised a perfect life but we are promised love and mercy and grace from our father and and we are gifted with his word and his his to be able to plant our feet on his rock and be able to choose how we think and what we listen to so I'm gonna leave you guys with that and I'm going to Say some prayers here if you guys have more questions on canning sourdough preserving fermenting any of that stuff leave me questions I'm gonna also put some links in there for some starter um, water bath training as well as some pressure uh, canning training and if you need people close by like I told you don't hesitate to do some research and look around those things are accessible there are people um, there are people out there that want to help people. I, I sold a, an aluminum um, tin that I had to a woman, a kettle. And uh, 
just met her on, on Facebook, uh, very much like-minded. Uh, she's a good Christian woman and uh, also uh, loves old things, lives in a neat old house, and uh, out of the blue, not knowing me from Adam, offered to help me pack if I needed help. You know, So there are people out there that want to help, and don't be afraid to ask the older generation. These people grew up canning their food and preserving often. Many of them have. So don't hesitate and who knows by asking an older person you might be gifted all their canning supplies that are up in their um, attic or in their storage uh, I've seen that happen already too. my friend Helen gifted people with her canning things because she's no longer canning so guys I hope this filled you up I hope that you gain things from this I hope that I gave you some nourishment and some uh, I don't know a, a skip to your step today because I refuse to be consumed or defined by our circumstances and I want to live my life to the fullest and like I said I know God is opening doors and the only way that we are going to see those doors really opening is if we are willing to receive them and we're willing to see them and not clouded by our circumstances so know that you can accomplish things know that by positivity you can you can attain these things and and make things happen so I'm gonna say a prayer for us all Papa, I just thank you for your love, your mercies, your grace, your forgiveness, and just all that you do for us, but more so what you're going to do for each and every one of us. I know you have a plan. It's laid out. It was laid out before we were even born, and you have great things in store for us, and we just need to be open and realize that there aren't coincidences, and there isn't luck. It's your divine nature and, and gifting that we get to receive and we need to be thankful every day for what we have because we are not promised anything what we are breathing right now we may not be breathing seconds from now we need to be thankful and happy and joy-filled people and willing to be a light and and a, an example to others and and that means living life through the chaos living life when things are hard and still being able to say you know things are hard but we are we're okay and 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 it, it's okay to feel the weights of things but it's also important to be able to see the joys in life while you're walking through these things i ask that you be with the martses and i ask that you be with the spooners and be with tim tomorrow with his surgery and i ask that you uh be with Kim Johnson and her children as they walk out this new uh, chapter in their life. And I just praise you for what you've been doing and how you've been strengthening these people and what you did in Terry's uh, situation with his MSRA or MRSA. And, and uh, thank you for each and every person that is willing to reach out and ask for prayers. That is just such a bold, bold stance to request prayer that does not signify weakness in any way and it's just so amazing that we have so many people to pray for and that we can see your hand and the miracles that you are working for these people continue to be with terry and june and mona and ken be with chad and just uh, strengthen him he is in such a weak tired state to strengthen him and give him the courage to keep moving forward and be with each and every person out there that has needs. We all have needs. They just vary and just, I ask that you be with everyone and wrap your loving arms around them. Those that are out there watching the replay, just be with them as well and, and let them feel your love and know they are loved by this community. And Papa, I just thank you for what you're gonna do in our lives and what you have in store for each and every one of us. Just allow us to live through the chaos and find joy in seeking you. And I ask all of this in your holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. Guys, I wish you a joy-filled, glorious day. Continue to keep expanding your horizons and your knowledge. Um, good luck to Kelly and to Shelly with their canning today. And, um, Enjoy your day. Live through the chaos. Thank you, sweet friend. Courtney says, have a good day, my friend. I love you, too. Praying for you all. I look forward to seeing you next week. And God bless. Love you all.